Imagine rolling up to the pond on an early Saturday morning to find that nobody else is fishing and the water is glass calm. You grab your favorite topwater lure out of the box and before long it goes from dead calm to absolute insanity. I don't think a lure category exists that gives you as much excitement in the least amount of time as a topwater does. And in today's video, I'm going to take you guys through the brand new mock spray and shad here from Mock Baits. My name's Tyler and let's jump into it. So in the intro, I talked about why topwater lures are so much fun, but I really want to, you know, hammer down on what makes not just the popper category special, but the spray and shad as a finesse popper. So let's start by talking about the design and the size of this popper. The spray and shad, as the package says, is a finesse popper. Now, what the heck does that mean? That means that it is meant to be thrown in more calmer, quieter situations. And it's not what I consider in my mind a big noise topwater. So a lot of poppers and in the patroller and walking baits, when you work them through the water, they have a loud action to them, a lot of maybe uh, rattles inside them, maybe a tungsten rattle, and they make a whole lot of noise, vibration, and water displacement. The spray and shad doesn't do any of that, but that doesn't mean it's not a good topwater. It is just designed for a different application, and that application being calm, shallow water. That's where the spray and shad is going to work best. I'm not saying you can't throw the spraying shad in waves or in a little bit of chop, but I think a topwater like a walking bait or the mock baits patroller is going to be better suited for that situation. If you have calm, shallow water and maybe fish that see a whole lot of topwaters, whether it's cloudy or calm, you can throw the spraying shad. It's got a very interesting open face design with two holes, one on each side, that enable it to have a good bubble trail as long as the barometric pressure is right as you work it through the water, helping fish find this top water. Now, when it comes to colors for a top water popper like this, what color should you throw for which condition? For dirty water, I would recommend anything that has a darker colored bottom. And remember, a top water is only as good color wise as what the bottom of it is because a fish has eyes on the top of its head. It's looking up at your bait. So even if it's got a super pretty side design or top design, the fish doesn't even see that. So in my opinion, selecting colors for your body of water and your conditions, it only matters of what's on the bottom. Now, when it comes to clear water, your color selection matters a little bit more. So if it is, uh, let's say a bright sunny day, the sun is just coming up and you want some reflection off your lure to really grab the fish's attention, I'm gonna go with chrome. If your bass are targeting bluegills in shallow water, I would go with the ghost perch color. And if you've got a cloudy day, I would recommend no other color than mock bone. But of course, that is just my color recommendations. Try what works for your body of water. Now I say we get up from sitting down, go to the pond and talk about the gear you need to throw a topwater finesse popper and the retrieval to get fish to eat this thing. So when it comes to the gear for the mock spray and shad, I would highly recommend a spinning rod just like the mock smash, mock crush, mock one, American hero, any of the really good combos we have. I would say at least six, six, if not seven foot or longer. And the reason why I say spinning rod is because a bait caster needs some weight to give that spool inertia to get going. At least that's the way that I think about it. That might not be the right science terms, but you know what I mean. And I'm telling you guys, for the majority of anglers to get distance and accuracy with the spray and shad, a bait caster is not what you want. You want a spinning rod because the line, instead of having to bring the spool with it, the spool rotates, the line just comes right off the spool. And for the fishing line for this, I would recommend 20 to 30 pound braid. The reason why I would not recommend a monofilament, fluorocarbon, polymer, some kind of a resin line is that they have more trouble coming off of a spinning rod, especially with a light lure than braid does. A 15, which actually I'm throwing today, 15 or 20 pound braid comes off your spool so easily and leads to more casting distance. So speaking of casting distance, let's cast. So the retrieval of the spraying shad is pretty dang simple. All you're gonna do is make the longest cast you can over productive water, close your spool, or close your bale I should say, reel in your slack, and then with the rod tip down like this, go bloop. I'm gonna call it a bloop even though it's technically a little pull. And every time you do this, it sprays water in two directions as it moves forward. Pull, reel and slack. Pull, pull, reel and slack. And you can mess with the retrieve. It might be a single pull each time, or you can do like I do, a single pull and then reel and slack, one, two, or one, two, three. 
and that'll kind of cause the, the spraying shad to walk side to side a little bit. I know the tendency is to work a top water really fast like this, but I'm, I'm telling you, this top water specifically, it says finesse for a reason, work it in the way it's designed. And one of the cool things about the spray and shad is that you can actually catch multiple different species on a topwater like this. Bluegills, cichlids, bass of all varieties, they will all eat the spray and shad. And if you notice your spray and shad has started to make some weird noises, it's not quite working properly, reel that thing in and your bait might look like this, where the line has actually caught the hook like that. And I see too many people that make another cast with their bait messed up. Do not do that. Free your line from your top or back treble hook and go back to fishing. There's one, there's one. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They are still in here. I knew there was a big one somewhere. I knew there was. Beautiful fish, look at that. Come on. Hard fighting boy on the 6'6 six, six spinning rod. Yes. Oh, not hooked very well. Get in here, get in here, yes. I'm so grateful for you, mister. Thank you for biting. Go back there and tell your 10 pound sister who I'm sure is in here that I'd like a meeting. So that's gonna bring to an end today's episode. Hopefully you guys enjoyed and learned something about the new mock spray and shad. My name's Tyler and we'll see you guys next time right here on Mock Nation.